Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have something really fun to share with you. A tiny synthesizer built with an ESP32 running the Mozi library. It's simple, compact, and powerful. Let's check out what it can do. Firstly, it utilizes I2S and the ESP32's internal DAC. That means you need an audio cable to hook it up to an external amplifier and speakers to actually hear the sound. There are 8 tracks that you can edit in real time. Just use the direction buttons to move around. And with a single tap on button 19, you can add a beat. Or button 16 to remove it. While you are editing, you instantly hear the changes. Which makes it really fun to experiment with the patterns on the fly. So that's the basic beat editing. There's also another mode where you can switch pages and edit the melody tracks that play along at the same time. Now, of course, plugging into an external amplifier every single time can feel a little inconvenient, right? Don't worry, there's a solution. Here's an external DAC and an audio amplifier. All you need to do is connect a speaker. By the way, I even planned for this. See that footprint? That's a spot for tiny SMD speakers I left on the board. Pretty neat, right? If you want to keep it super compact, you can just solder on a pair, and it'll be totally self-contained. For today's demo, I used bigger speakers, so the sound comes through loud and clear. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, this is great, but the built-in display is pretty small. Fair enough. But hey, this is an ESP32, so why not turn it into a web server with a full web UI? That way, you can control everything from a phone, a tablet, or even your computer screen. It's fully responsive, so it looks good on any device. And if you're thinking, forget the screen, just play music like a jukebox. Don't worry, I got you covered. It can also run as a standalone music player, automatically playing preloaded tracks without touching the buttons at all. So why don't we have a listen to a couple of tracks?
pretty cool, right? Oh, by the way, you can also turn it into an internet radio if you want. And in today's video, I'll walk you through how I built it. And by the way, the full schematic and the source code I am using here are all available on my GitHub. The code was mainly created for this demo, so it's not perfect. But if it can serve as a starting point or some inspiration for your next project, I couldn't be happier. And if you'd like to actually build your own PCB or even get the whole thing assembled, you can order it directly from the PCBWay project page. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The story begins like this. One day, I stumbled across this video and a blog post, and I was absolutely fascinated by what the Mozi library can do. I thought to myself, making this kind of upbeat, groovy music on my own would be so much fun. So I decided I have to try building one myself. Huge thanks to Fendel AP for sharing such a great project and the source code. After reading that article and doing a bit more research, I found even more inspiring Mozi projects on the official page. I got a lot of ideas, but to keep things simple and avoid too many risks, I first aim to build something close to the original project. At the same time, I wanted to make it more compact and functional. So I decided to fit everything neatly onto a single PCB. Instead of using the exact same ESP32 module as the original project, I adjusted the design to work with the module I already had on hand. Just like in the original design, the simplest way is to use ESP32's internal DAC. That's the default mode supported by the Mozi library. For higher quality and higher resolution sound, I also added support for an external DAC. When using the external DAC, the audio signal flows straight into the amplifier and then out to the speakers. Both the internal and external DAC circuits share pins 25 and 26 on the ESP32. So I added the solder jumpers to easily switch between them. Since the amplifier needs 5 volt, I also added a boost converter to step up from 3.3 volt. Normally, you could just pull 5 volt from USB, but the ESP32 module I use doesn't expose a 5 volt pin. So this was the workaround. Finally, I added the required buttons and pods for control. When running only on the internal DAC, the whole circuit is actually very minimal and clean. So with the schematic all set, let's move on to the PCB design. Now comes the most fun part, the PCB design. I like to lay everything out by hand, and this time I wanted it to look especially clean and symmetric. Right in the center, I placed the ESP32 module. The USB connector is at the edge of the board, so it's easy to plug in when programming or debugging. Next to the ESP32 sits the OLED display, perfectly aligned with the center. Beneath the OLED is the audio amplifier circuit, and directly under the ESP32 is the external DAC section. Once the modules are plugged in, you won't even see those circuits. For controls, I added buttons and volume pods on both sides of the ESP32 module to keep the layout nice and balanced. I also added three pods on each side to adjust tempo, channel, and the envelope parameters, release, sustain, decay, and attack. At the very top, right in the middle, there's a toggle switch for play and pause. On either side of that switch, there's an audio jack. 
one on the left for output from the internal DAC, and one on the right for the ticking sound. I also reserved space for tiny service mount speakers, but for this demo, I wired up larger speakers for better audio quality. So that's the overall PCB layout, clean, symmetric, and practical. This time, I used PCBWay's PCB assembly service again, and honestly, it never disappoints. When the board arrived on my desk, I was super excited just to look at it. That sleek matte black solder mask really makes it shine. I've tried PCBWay's PCB assembly service a few times already, and as always, the results are just amazing. If you are thinking about using a PCB assembly service yourself, I'd definitely recommend giving PCBWay a try. As for the programming, I started out heavily inspired by the original blog project, but I ended up making a lot of modifications of my own. All of the code is available on GitHub, so feel free to check it out, fork it, or even improve it. Contributions are always welcome. You can find the GitHub link in the description. And if you want to order your own board, just head over to the PCBWay project page. I will leave a link down below. All right, that's it for today's video. This was my first time trying out a synthesizer style project. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. I even made a few tracks myself. And wow, making music is definitely harder than it looks. I really felt the struggle. Guess I'm not quite a natural musician. Still, seeing the hardware and the sounds come together just like I imagined, that feeling is awesome. I've got more sound-related projects coming up, so if you want to see them, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.